What I'd like to welcome you to uh, Orange County Association of Realtors social media panel. We have absolutely a wonderful panel today and I'm sure you're going to learn a lot. The interesting thing about social media marketing is that social media is still in its infancy. It's changed the game of real estate dramatically over the last few years, but I really believe that social media is going to change the game even more faster and more completely than we've ever imagined. I really believe that social media is replacing traditional prospecting in so many different ways. The numbers are absolutely staggering about what's going on. If anybody read the article in Inc. Magazine recently, they talked about how social media is transforming businesses of all sorts dramatically. Currently, Every day, there are three billion searches on Google. And I really want to think about what that means. People are going to the internet find information. One of the interesting things is the average U.S. adult now, over the age of 35, is spending 56 minutes a day on Facebook. That's your prime marketplace. And Facebook is the first thing in the history of the United States that's actually decreased the average amount of TV viewership of American adults. Also, one of the interesting things is 20%, 28% of all online advertising is now placed on Facebook. It is by far the number one source for advertising of major companies of so many different people out there. And today, we need to understand how to utilize those technologies. These five agents are utilizing social media in a variety of very creative, innovative ways. And I just want to take a minute and introduce our panelists. First of all, I want to introduce Raj Kazar. And Raj has done an amazing job marketing, doing $50, $60 million a year in sales here in Orange County. He has created one of the most dominant real estate teams in the Orange County area. Every one of his listings is assigned a best-in-class sales and marketing campaign and receives the support of industry-leading marketing, advertising, and complete social media marketing blitz that sellers love. Raj uses high-definition video to do marketing the way it should be done. Raj is also a leader on marketing on Pinterest, and I highly recommend you follow and uh, subscribe to his Pinterest boards because if you want to know where to eat, what to do, they are definitely worth following. What really separates Raj apart is that he provides service that is truly second to none <clears throat> out there that has helped build his brand, his identity, and made clients love working with him. Next to uh, Raj, and Raj is on the end there, you don't know, um, we have Michael Delo. Didlo. Didlo. Trying to get that right, Michael. <clears throat> Didlo. Didlo. Okay. And he has a background in the corporate world. Mike comes from the high-tech startup world. And Mike was the director of online marketing and directed global technology presentations around the world. So he comes from technology from a very different perspective than the average realtor. Mike has always loved marketing, and his other passion was real estate. The second Mike saw Facebook, he knew and he had found the perfect tool that would allow him to bring these two passions together in the way that Mike could be creative, fun, and effective. Mike has always used extensive use of images to paint his posts with imagination and humor, and uses his personal page as his primary lead generation tool. So Mike's got a very interesting insight. He comes from a long background of investing in real estate, bought his first house at the age of 24, and has truly been a leader on Facebook marketing out there. So Michael Didlo. Did All right. Then, in the middle, we have Robin Milanakis, and uh, Robin is truly sort of a legend on Facebook. She is known for her passion for football, her dogs, and Jimmy Two Shoes. But most of all, if you read Robin's posts, she fights for her clients, does amazing things, and engages in a dialogue that creates engagement. And that's what social media is really all about. It's learning how to engage. She's done an amazing job building a team of professionals and does an amazing amount of business and I'm sure she's going to have some great insights for us. So uh, Robin has always got some cutting edge things to talk about. Next to uh, Robin we have Jeremy Lehman and Jeremy got his start in real estate 
as a technology trainer back in 1998. He became a realtor in 2007 and has been leading the way in social media marketing ever since. Jeremy says that Facebook has allowed him to develop new relationships that otherwise probably would not have been possible. He attributes just about every business success he's had in the past five years to his presence in social media. Jeremy has worked with Apple of Orange County to help develop the MLS Touch, the first mobile MLS solution. He's an advisor for a startup company, New Offer, a mobile transaction document solution, and he's truly an example of building connections through social media. Last but not least, we have Angie Weeks, and Angie also comes from a technology background. Here in Orange County, she founded an internet marketing company 10 years ago, and Angie uses her background in SEO, understanding the internet, and uses that to generate leads through both organic search and social media. She tweets, she blogs, and she Facebooks for business. Last year, over 60% of her closed transactions came directly from social media marketing. She frequently speaks on various SEO topics, social media marketing for different business groups around Orange County. This year, Angie is the chair of the Orange County Young Professionals Network. She's also OCAR's youngest elected director. So uh, she's actively giving back to the board. And she is also making a long-term difference in real estate through our nationwide Vow to Save program, which allows engaged couples to register to buy a home and save money through an innovative online site that maybe she'll have a chance to talk about. So this is our panel. The way I thought we would run this today is just go down and have each one of them talk 10 or 15 minutes about what they're doing in social media, sort of what makes them different, how they're approaching it, and hopefully share some examples of how they're getting direct business from social media. Then we'll open it up for questions. I would also love you to pull out your computers, your iPads, your iPhones, any technology you have. The Wi-Fi password here for the Orange County Auditorium is listings. So log on to the Wi-Fi. And then use hashtag OCAR to join the conversation if you have a question. Put the hashtag in. I've got my computer here. I'll be happy to take questions. And I will go to Twitter first for questions. Then we'll take questions from the audience if uh, you can't tweet them. And if you have no idea what a hashtag is, Hopefully this group will explain it. So, we're going to start with Raj. Raj, it's all yours. Wow, just, just go for it, huh? That's it. All right. Well, I guess uh, what our team has uh, been really focusing on is um, traditionally having an overall marketing strategy that starts on Facebook. So I think having that strategy in your mind first, whether it's a hyper-local strategy, whether it's an engaging strategy, um, really begins on Facebook for us. And um, we don't really talk about our listings on our personal page. Um, that's what our business pages are for. But I think what's really important, especially if you're just starting off or in Facebook and maybe not seeing a lot of return from it, is really getting that strategy down and talking to either uh, your teammates or your sphere about what that strategy is up to. So that's kind of, in a sense, what we're doing. Our website, rajkasar.com, is kind of our hub. We've got a handful of spokes coming off that. So our goal is to get everyone to rajkasar.com. So whether it's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, YouTube, Google+, our iPhone app, whatever it is, it's all directed back to rajkasar.com. So Raj, you mentioned that you you don't talk about listings on your personal page. Not so much. Could you elaborate why that is and how you use your personal page and business page and what the difference is in your mind. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, we want people to know that we're in real estate on our personal page, but we don't want them maybe to know that we're in real estate on our personal page. So there's so many different ways to pull people over from your personal page to your business page, whether, whatever that may be, whether it's a John Smith realtor page or whether it's a community page about the city that you're actually farming and working. So give us an example of a post that might pull from your personal page to your business page. Yeah, so for example, uh, we had a listing a couple months ago, and this street was really uh, it was really special. I grew up actually in that city, and I remember riding my skateboard 
down those streets. I mean, tree lined streets, these homes had really traditional, gorgeous curb appeal. And the home we were selling was remodeled and redone. And it really looked like a New England inspiration, but right here in Orange County. So my post was basically this home brings me back to my childhood tree lined streets, gorgeous curb appeal, and kind of an easy way of life. And so what we did is our team, we focused our marketing around those three key designations for that home. And we just put a picture up. And I said, anyone else remember riding their skateboards or their bikes on this street? And that was how we pushed the home on our personal page. Our business page had the video and the photos and all the goodies that go along with marketing. But on our personal page, that's how we did it. So one of the things I, I know people would like to understand is when you take a listing, how do you actually market it? What is your what are the things that you do for a listing that sort of separate you out from the average agent? This is a free session though, right? <laughs> it is. <laughs> a free version. Um, yeah. well, well, well there's a lot that we do. So kind of what we do, we we take fabulous photography, we do amazing video, we stage and design every single listing, and then we push it socially, no old bar, and we have a great SEO and online ads. That's the fact that listing, in a nutshell. That's the free version. And I imagine your sellers sort of hate that. The, the sellers hate what? All that marketing. <laughs> yeah, they hate it. It's, they absolutely hate it. So yeah, and, um, a great quote um, from a seller that we had a couple weeks ago. They basically said, we don't think there's another person looking for a home in Brea that has not seen our home. Whether they're looking for a home or not even looking for our home, They've seen it somewhere <coughs> online or in print. I mean, I, I think that's what your visibility of your listings has been extraordinary that way. Tell us a little about what you're doing with Pinterest. Yeah, so Pinterest is really fun. So we actually, Jeremy and I were just at the Apple Store down the street, Mission Media, speaking about, Jeremy was talking about mobile and iPad apps, and um, I was talking about Pinterest. But what's so great about Pinterest, it, it's kind of like a marketer's dream. It's total eye candy. Pinterest. And, and what I said down in Mission Viejo, we live in the land of eye candy. I mean, Orange County, beautiful people, beautiful cars, beautiful real estate. I mean, it's just an opportune platform for us to showcase where we live and what we do. And like you said like in the introduction, if you're looking for something to do in Orange County and you run across our Pinterest page, we don't say just listed, just sold on our Pinterest page. We actually don't even say that on our Facebook pages, but um, on Pinterest, it's more like Orange County spaces, Orange County things to do, Orange County food truck. I mean, how many of you guys have been to a food truck lately? You know, I mean, it's all the rage. I mean, the crazy names. I mean, our local high school uh, up in the area that we live, every Thursday night, they have a gourmet food truck uh, uh, kind of festival in their parking lot. And so we think about that. So we write a blog post about food trucks <coughs> that were there Thursday night. And then from our website, we pin that blog post on Pinterest. And so that, was, that basically does creates a backlink back to our website. So when someone sees, you know, Dogzilla, they're like, what the heck is that? And that looks pretty cool. They're able to see that on Pinterest, click through on the picture, take them to our website, read the blog post, and what else is on our website? Listings, search, and Facebook, and everything else. I, mean, I, I, I subscribe to all your Pinterest boards and love what you do there. So uh, I think that's a great thing. And I'm amazed at how few agents seem to be embracing the Pinterest opportunities that way. Here's the thing about Pinterest, and you guys should totally write this down. So it is the fastest growing website ever. Ever, ever. Okay, there's not a website that has grown faster than Pinterest in the history of the web. Okay, so what that means is that there's eyeballs on Pinterest. And so whatever you're doing, you should be marketing on Pinterest. In a way, that's not cheesy and salesy. First of all, right? You want to be original and you want to pin about your passion. So whatever you're passionate about, that's really where your inspiration should come from. <coughs> okay? We're passionate about Orange County and everything there is to do in Orange County. Uh, our intern's actually painting right now about backyard kind of oasis in Orange County. I mean, people go nuts in their backyards, right? And all of you guys are selling these homes or these you know, amazing backyards. Sometimes you feel like you want video cameras behind you when you're walking through these backyards. They're so amazing. So pin about that. I mean, pin about whatever drives you and gives you a lot of passion. All right. So uh, we'll come back and open up to questions for uh, Raj in a little while. But right now, let's turn it to Michael. And uh, tell us what you're doing. You're doing an amazing job on Facebook and generating leads. So, uh, Well, you know, 
know, for me, I, I looked at the panelists here today, and we all have a pretty much different style of how we approach it. No question about it. Even if you look at the the amount of friends that we have on our personal pages, or the pages we have on our business sites. For me, I have three primary Facebook uh, presence. One is is my Didlo, my own personal page. The other one is Didlo Real Estate Group, which is my business page. And then the one that seems to really have unbeknownst to me when I first started it, that has the most notoriety is Take a Hike with Mike. And we're talking about what's the passion. And a little background on Take a Hike with Mike. It started one day in the uh, in my office that there is a walk that I do every Saturday. And it's down the Strand Beach in Dana Point. It's one of the best places to walk. And I thought, you know, um, this is such a great spot. Everybody should know about this. And there was somebody in the office that said, well, there's an app out there called uh, uh, Map My Walk. I thought, well, that's pretty cool. I'll go map the walk. I'll put it up on my website and just suggest that anybody who's visiting from outside of Orange County go take this walk. Then I thought, well, heck. You know, why don't I suggest that I'll meet them there at 9 o'clock, and I'll walk with them, and I'll talk about Dana Coin, the local area, restaurants, any questions that they may have. So that's kind of how it started out. And then, of course, Facebook came along. And uh, so, so we kind of took up on that. But what happened is this hike started drawing, you know, some of the locals. And it's mainly a, uh, most of my audience specifically is a, a Christian single space. That's what kind of started out. And all the churches grabbed hold of this thing. And then people grabbed it and put it as a media. And just it kind of proliferated on its own. <clears throat> and so we we came up with a logo, we give out t-shirts, I get there every morning, I have coffee, trail snacks, water, all this type of stuff. Uh, the biggest group that I've had. What I love about what Mike's doing is he's involved. He's actually there. He's a, a real life human being behind his Facebook presence. So that is just total engagement. And I just give him kudos for that because a lot of times we get stuck behind our iPhone or iPad or our computer. And we're not out there. You think that if you just get a business page on Facebook and start posting, that's, oh my gosh, you're going to get leads. But I love what he's doing. It. I mean, that is, I love it. Man. It's great. Well, and yeah, you know, it, it's, it, it is a passion, and I do enjoy it. Um, and so that also spun off. We had to take the hike with Mike and my biggest crowd, 47 people. Of people, you know, a lot of people I don't even know, they just show up, was followed by Have a Bite with Mike, which is my pop up, Bite with Mike. So, you know, it plays off with all this stuff. So, really, my my names are, are very strategic. Didlo, who's that Didlo guy? Who's that Didlock guy? Whatever you want to call me, I don't care, just write me a check. <laughs> but that name, B I D E L O T, it is very pronounced. But this Take the Hype with Mike thing is just. Unbelievable. I have been in restaurants, supermarket, homeless events that people have come up to me going, You're that take a hike with my guy. You're a celebrity. I mean, so what it is, is Facebook to me is all about who I am and, and trying to get my personality out there. If you look at my personal page, you'll know who I am and what I like and my humor and everything about it. But one thing that I constantly do is I go back and forth between my pages. The first thing I do every morning, and I suggest this to everybody, is get up and see whose birthday it is. The number one thing you should do is see whose birthday it is, and what I did this morning, Ron Siegel, you know? Happy birthday, Ron, from all your friends at the Didlow Real Estate Group. And of course, if you put an X sign before Didlow, it brings up that link. And I don't post anything without an image. I have a little image library. I have, I added a new coffee today. And I go, coffee, and then I see which number I'm on. I'm on number 60 for just cups of coffee, different coffee things. Birthdays are up to like 85 different images. So I try to pick who the personality is. You know, my favorite one is the guy that is going like this, going, happy birthday. What? And, and people love it. And what, you got that? I didn't get that either. <laughs> <What's> that? <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, <laughs> next year. He doesn't see you. Hi, my neighbor. Well, what it does too is then people see this on other people's pages, then all of a sudden.
and they like that. Then they come and click on Didlow Real Estate Group and like that. Then they go, oh, Mike Didlow and Dole. So all of a sudden, they are now touching all of my pages. And again, what is it? It's the Didlow, you know, Mike Didlow, Didlow Real Estate Group, <coughs> what have you. So mine is much more personal interaction of people. So the question that I'm sure is more people who want to know here is, how does that lead to business? Well, probably the one thing I mostly miss at is, is posting listings and solds and all that type of stuff. I'd say from my posting, one out of every ten might be a real estate post. And typically it's some news bulletin from KCM Log or, or just from some place that is of interest that's simple for the audience to understand in a hurry and has an image to it. And so, again, that try to engage them in this type of thing. But it, uh, I look at Facebook more as a branding exercise versus a lead generation. Just the way I look at it. And the leads just come. I, I really get a lot of people that take hype with my phone. We're walking, and what do they say? So, how's real estate? How's the market? How's the market? We'll see you. And that's what I want you to realize. I mean, to me, that's called lead generation. <laughs> and yet, I, I hear agents say, well, I'm just myself. I'm just being normal, and leads just come. I'm not really lead generating. It's well, being yourself. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. And, you know, another thing that I do, too, because I have a very diverse group that are with me, everything from, uh, you know, a Learjet pilot to... Uh, you know, an out-of-work computer guy to, you know, executives at some of the local companies and, and such. And uh, I, I never encourage any other realtors to join me. Sorry, <laughs> as a matter of fact, you know, it's uh, it, 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 it's all mine. Uh, well, they do it on purpose during Saturday And uh, I also encourage some of my uh, affiliates to come. It's like, what if somebody said, Mike, how's the real estate market? I've been thinking of buying a house. Well, what's the first thing you should be doing? Are you qualified? Heck, you know, uh, my friend Tanya from I Mortgage is in the back of the line. Why don't you just go talk to her? And they'll drop back. And we all mix it up. And it's just a, a real you know, social activity, which is what it's supposed to do. <coughs> but I think what you're doing is to answer your question also. People want to do, just like anything in sales, people want to do business with people they know, respect, and trust. And so what he's doing is creating an atmosphere of trust and respect that people are getting to know him on Facebook first. And then they go on the walk maybe and then see that he's a, a good guy. And then hey, when that day comes up, they do want to buy a home or are interested in the market, even just have a question, then there he is. Well, and also I'll do things like uh, <clears throat> little contests. I'm a real big, I'm a Starbucks card nut. And uh, what I'll do, with it, and part of this test market, I'll put up something on Take a Hike with Mike and say, the first five people that come up to me on the hike this Saturday that say, I saw this post, you'll get a Starbucks card. All right? Uh, when I do an open house, this is one area. I said, if you stop by my open house between two and four and just say, I like to build a real estate, you will get a Starbucks card. A hundred people will see it, I'll give out one Starbucks card. I don't care how many Starbucks cards I give out, it's a hundred people will see it. Oh, that's innovative. And I don't just give out a Starbucks, I give the coveted Hawaii Starbucks card that <laughs> you don't get here. So, and I have an image of it up there and what have you. So, I'm going back and forth all over the place with people. Well, I think that's what makes it work so well, and it's partly, it's that engagement you seem so friendly on Facebook. You seem approachable, a real human being, and I think that's part of your success on there. So, uh, well, it's who I am too. Really, it really is. I think a reflection of just who I am. It, you can certainly see my sense of humor on there. All right. So, you mentioned that you don't have as many friends, or you don't try and get as many friends. How do you deal with friend requests? Oh, I just about accept anybody's friend request, but. <laughs> I will, because everybody's a potential client. Do you, do you unfriend anyone? I unfriended somebody yeah, yesterday. I, 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 I was just like That's sick of it. I just like, I don't want to see any of this crap anymore. But what I do is... Uh, 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 <laughs> I love Robbie. But 
I, if I were going to make one suggestion, especially if you're starting out on Facebook, is, is designate some categories to put your people in. Absolutely. Whenever I get any friend requests, I first to see who our mutual friends are. I look to see what business they're in. Are they a realtor, what have you. If they're a realtor, that's fine. But I put them under a category of realtor, known or not known. And then if they're like a Keller Williams, so that would be my family of, of Keller Williams people, or, or whatever it is. Would take a hike with Mike, I have, let's say, 250 people that have that tag. So when I create an event, which I do every week, is I know how to send out the invite. I don't send it out to everybody, it's just to take a hike with Mike. All right. Some great information there. All right, so uh, Robin, we'll turn our attention to you. And uh, you have such incredible, interesting posts. So tell us about your strategy and what all you're doing. And Follow directions. 
completely. Okay, so it says what is on your mind. Okay, everyone, do you understand what is on your mind? What is really on our mind? Okay, it doesn't say what did you say out loud. So what I do is I say what is on my mind, and I just happen to be very creative. And um, so I actually type it out, and at first I, I wasn't even thinking, and everyone was like, oh my god, this girl is nuts. And, and everyone kind of caught on and understood that I really didn't care, that that was what was on my mind. I was just saying what everyone else was thinking. So it starts conversation, and it gets a lot of engagement, and it actually gets kind of humorous, and I get arguments on there. And I've never really even voiced an opinion. People just assume I have. Um, so you've got to be really careful with perception, because people are going to perceive, and a post is going to appear to them however they see the world. And so you just have to be aware of, aware of like, some people may not like you, some people might like you. Um, I have a business page, which is total business. We like to do a lot of video on that. It's very professional. Um, I have another personal page that I try to keep PC, kind of keep it clean. Um, that's for the overflow of people, because I have a waiting list. And, um, and then I have one page that I forgot about that we just made it up as a joke, because I'm single, and it says, um, what does that mean? And so we started it because someone said, can you not? Like, what does it mean when a guy says, want to hang out? And so we just started this page for like all it is is questions like what does that mean and like so it's just a fun social thing for us that actually leads to business. I do talk about real estate in in a different way. I don't be like just listed, just sold. I'll talk about oh my god, this amazing view um, at this new property or um, did you have to paint it this color? Um, I people love photos. Like if this was your house, what color would you paint it? Or if someone has really bad landscaping next door, I'll take a picture of it and be like, oh my god, oh my god, what do you do? You know, like, this is next door. And, um, but I, I, one thing I really think everyone should know, and when they talk about lists, um, one, be authentic. You have to be authentic because if you're not who you are online and you show up and you're somebody else, it's just they're going to see you do that. Um, my Facebook, I would say 50% of it is my natural, real life, and I'm very open with that. And the, one of the reasons I am is if I'm not open to risk of being vulnerable, I can't help you. Like, I can't help people if, I, if I'm if i not okay with people not being okay with me. So that's one reason why I do it. Um, the other thing is with when it comes to your clients, I think it's great to be friends with your Facebook. Um, with your clients, I really do. I just think you need to know how to list, how to list them, because I think you should be touching them and saying great things on their photos and saying hi to them on their wall and congratulating them and, and saying like yay on their friends' photos and stuff. What you need to understand is when um, you're a realtor, you're not allowed to have a life, and when your client does not want you doing anything else but help them buy or sell their house. So, when you are in that transaction, they don't understand social media, so you cannot be posting anything. You cannot be on a boat on the 4th of July. You cannot have Christmas. You cannot be at a Super Bowl party. You cannot be doing any of those things because that means you are human, and as realtors, we are not allowed to be human. So, you need to know how to have groups and what, who can see what, and that's what I mean friends. I'm okay if people are friends with um, Facebook. You just need to know how to use it correctly. I think you should be touching them. It's free, it's farming, it's every day. Let them know you're there. So one of the things that I get asked, especially when people see some of your posts, first of all, I love some of your posts where you talk about what you're doing for your clients. Um, like, I, one of my favorite posts of yours is, I think the, the start off was something like, I have two things in common with city workers, and you talk about city workers, and somehow you bring it back to real estate, and you have these wonderful little stories that give people the feeling that, gosh, there's somebody that's going to fight for their clients. How do you come up with those? Because it's real life, and it just, you have to just go out with me for a day and understand what my world is like. I don't know. Ask Susan, she, I take her one game, and I swear to God, we called 911, and we weren't even there yet. And um, I'm a Midwest girl, and I would go to the end of the earth to get something done. It's just in me, it's in my DNA, and 
if I have to swim across a swamp and to make something happen, I'll do it. <laughs> <Thanks, sister. laughs> I'm, I'm going to get this done. I mean, because my word is good, and it's an integrity thing. Um, and I, I guess what it is, but and I and I my eyes are wide open. So every I think everyone goes through life with those goggles, like on the horse races, and they sort of they don't see anything around them. And I'm really paying attention to everything around us. And you guys are so hilarious. And you know, like everyone is so funny, and the world is so funny. And I just I see it, and I share it, and I want other people to see it. But um, I don't know how I end up in some of the situations. I think I'm just gutsy to take them on. I think I'll do it. Nobody else will, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it definitely makes you human. I think that your posts have that entertaining <coughs> mix of personality, and yet you're always real. I'm not perfect. I'm so perfectly imperfect, you guys. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm not even close to being perfect. That's one thing I can tell you I will want to do all day long. So one of the things that people ask me all the time is, gosh, should I talk about problems <coughs> in my life? Should I talk about if I, you know, I'm not feeling perfect? Now, you seem to have fun with all of that. What's your thinking, your strategy, and how have people responded? Again, um, a lot of people that don't know me personally think that my whole life is on Facebook. They think it's like a reality show or what's that, um, Ed TV or whatever that movie was um, with uh, um, that guy, Jim Carrey. Yeah. The Truman Show. They call my Facebook the Truman Show. Okay. But they don't realize that I have a really huge part of my life that is private. Um, but I do share a lot of personal things too. Um, I share a lot about like, when my father when he was sick because you know what? I'm not the only one that's had a sick parent. And people need to know like that you're not alone. And you know what? I've had hard times. <laughs> I've had really hard times. And still have all of you. <laughs> and people need to know that they're not alone because not everyone is brave enough to speak. So I'm not I'm gonna do that voice. And I'm just gonna take on my team and I'm gonna do it. And um, and that's when I say I can't help anyone if I'm not if I'm not okay with like just putting out there, I can't help anyone. All right. So let's turn our attention to Jeremy and Jeremy, I, I love the fact that you are, to me, you represent the new generation of real estate agent. You came from a technology background. You seem to understand technology. And from day one, you've sort of built an image and identity and been able to attract clients at a very rapid rate, build a very large business very quickly, not because you were around for 27 years in real estate. So tell us how you accomplished that and how you're using social media. Well, yeah, so when uh, social media first came out, I was transitioning from the title industry where I was doing technology for real estate agents into being a full-time agent. And um, I was just connecting with friends. And, you know, I thought, wow, I build this real estate business. But, you know, I'm not really, when it comes down to it, I'm not really a full-time realtor, right? So I still do technology stuff, too. Um, but I didn't look at Facebook as a, as a business builder right off the bat. I just looked at it as a way to stay in touch with people that otherwise would, would stay in touch with. You know, so... I mean, how many people, when you just call them, if they don't answer the phone, or it's weird if you call them because you haven't talked to them in a really long time. So I use, I've always used Facebook as kind of that icebreaker. If I meet somebody at a party, I can make friends with them on Facebook and, and kind of maybe develop a little bit deeper relationship there. And if that's maybe something that's valuable to both of us, maybe I can go meet for our coffee or something like that. So um, <coughs> on Facebook, ultimately, my, my strategy is just to be myself and, and have conversations with people on a daily basis. And I, I target people, so if, if you know, if there's somebody I really want to get closer to or know better, then I'll go to their <laughs> page and talk to them or message them or things like that. And ultimately, the strategy works. You know, I, I don't advertise a that I'm a real estate agent or b that I do real estate technology necessarily. And I don't say hire me. And and I definitely don't go to associations and say you know hire me to do a, a local <laughs> class or anything like that. But I have two to three talks or classes I do a week, and I have people probably almost weekly that will message me through Facebook saying, hey, what's a short sale? Or I just drove by this house today to my neighborhood, what do you think of it? And these are people that I've never had a, conversa a real estate conversation with. Sometimes I haven't talked to them at all. I, don't, I really don't even know who they are. And I look at, you know, we went to high school 20 years ago or something like that. So 
my, you know, ultimately Facebook is a way for me to stay in touch with people I want to stay in touch with, and it just so happened it was at a perfect time in my in my career transition, if you will, to um, you know to, to build my real estate business as well and my technical business. All right. So what what do you think you makes what you do on Facebook or social media really work well? What are examples of? Yeah. So I, I think uh, the big thing for me is that I talk to people. So you know, I I update my status once or twice a day typically. Sometimes I don't do it at all. But um, you know, I'll update my status, and that, that kind of gives me visibility, right? So if I just if I do nothing but update my status, a few hundred people will see my name that day. Um, and then you know, I'll think like, gosh, I you know, I haven't talked to we, I talked to that guy from the MLS, you know, at this meeting a month ago, but I haven't seen him since. And, uh, and so I, when I scan my feed, I kind of keep people in, in my mind, and if they have a status update, I might comment on their status. So if you notice, most of what I do is actually, com you know, having conversations with other people, commenting on their pictures, commenting on their status, or going on their wall and saying something if I haven't talked to them in quite a while. So how much time each day do you spend in social media? It certainly varies, but probably 15 minutes minimum a day. It could be a half hour, even to an hour, depending on what's happening, if I'm bored or if nothing's going on. But the reality is I'm very busy, so you know I, I don't have time to get into Facebook all the time. This is where kind of the mobile stuff comes in. I, I do most of my Facebook in front of my phone. So I'll be in line at Vons or whatever, and what am I going to do for the next five minutes while I'm waiting for this person to check me out? So I'll scan my, my news feed and see what's happening. There's usually some updates. People might have been talking to me on, you know, on Facebook, so I'll check that. And then, you know, I'll just get right back to them. And then when I'm driving, I'm not going to get into Facebook. When I'm, you know, with my kids, I'm not going to get into Facebook. So, um, you know, it's 15 to 30 minutes, I guess, is probably about right. All right. So what's, what's the most unusual way you've generated business from social media? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know if it is unusual, per se. I, you know, I think... Um, for me, it's, you know, it's well. It's the fact that I haven't asked for the business, and yet people will call me up and, and give me the business. I guess that's probably unusual, right? Where you, you don't market to anybody, and yet they still call you up and ask you. And you know, for me too, I look at Facebook as kind of a pipe dream because even though you know I post some deals definitely through Facebook and, and quite a few, but um, I'm looking down the road and look at these emails I'm getting from people that have short sold a year and a half, two years ago, and they want to buy again, but they're asking me how long does it take to buy. Or how do I re rebuild my credit score? Or you know, we're looking to move in six months. I'm getting these types of emails, which is fantastic. Because that means you know, 2013, 2014, I'll be definitely getting some business from these Facebook people that I've done you know, no cost to build that business. While I'll be closing some transactions with them. So I know that you've worked hard at making those connections and just keeping that conversation going. Is there a particular strategy or thing that you're thinking about when you're on Facebook, going through, looking at your news feed, looking at what's going on? Well, you know, I think Robin hit, hit a, um, a good point, and that is like Facebook's just a cocktail party. And I, whenever I get on Facebook, that's exactly what I think of a room like this with literally everybody I know. I've got clients in there, I've got past clients, I've got possibly future clients, tons of real estate agents, and my, you know, my family, and, and my, you know, my kids aren't in there that good. My wife's in there, right? So you kind of, you, you have this, you kind of walk this line between, a, between being a professional and a business person or whatever, or, and a family guy in my case. And so, um, yeah, I just kind of, uh, I don't know, I just think of it like that. I mean, I don't really have a strategy per se. I just think of, well, what would I say in a room like that? Everybody can overhear what I'm saying, so I don't want to be too crazy, and I don't want to be too businessy, right? So what am I going to say in those situations? Because you can be overheard on Facebook, which is fantastic. Um, you know, one thing too, a strategy that I have is, you know, obviously I've got you know probably a few hundred real estate agents minimum that I'm friends with, and they're always posting listings. And Raj and I don't post listings, right? And so, but I'll comment on their listings because people can overhear what I'm saying. So if, if you know, a friend of mine took a listing and I like it and I want to go see it, I might say something about their listing, and I've got probably a couple hundred friends that might see that post, and then they know what I do for a living. It's pretty good. All right. So, any other social media tools? What are you using primarily? Facebook? Do you tweet? Do you use video? Yeah, YouTube? So I, yeah, we, 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 we do video for our listings on, on YouTube. And, and really, Raj and I just teamed up a few months ago. And so, you know, I'm kind of, I'm, we, we, 
I'm moving into that realm on, on video and stuff. But most of my stuff is on Facebook. Right? Twitter's neat. I, I like Twitter. But you know, 90% of all social media interaction is through Facebook. And to me, that's where my uh, sphere of influence is, if you will, the people that I interact with. So it just makes sense for me to be on there. I monitor Twitter, if you will. And you know, I reach out and talk to people on there if I can't get to them through Facebook. I think Twitter, if you're not on Twitter, you should have, have a presence on Twitter. And what you may want to consider with Twitter, it, it, it's one of those things where um, you know, there are people that I want to connect with on Facebook that wouldn't connect with me on Facebook, it's just too popular or whatever. But if I messaged them through Twitter, they would respond immediately, which I thought was interesting because I couldn't get to them through Facebook, but I can talk to them on Twitter all day long. So you may want to consider Twitter to look up people that you're really interested in connecting with. And in the technological world, you know, I'm trying to connect with CEOs of MLSs and associations and things like that. And they're not always on Facebook. So you know, Twitter's another example. Raj pointed out Pinterest. I think Pinterest is a fantastic way to get attention. Um, so these are all things you should consider, but I think Facebook is kind of that hub. All right. So last but not least, we have Angie. In Angie, I love the fact that you're doing a variety of different social media things. You've sort of mastered SEO, you're tweeting. So tell us a little bit about how you do that, especially to generate 60% of your business from social media. What's your strategy? Well, uh, it, it all started with SEO, most definitely. And uh, the blog posts and the articles that I write, that's how I got most of
lot of what you'll see in my strategy is just you know some of that positivity so that they can really believe in themselves. And it's amazing how they reach out to you. They send you, you know, private messages and say, I saw that you posted about that short sale and I'm going through that. And then they really open up to you and they ask you questions. And once they, you know, believe in you and they believe how hard you work, then a lot of times you end up getting the deal through that. And uh, one of the buyers that I'm working with right now, they, you know, I was in a mastermind group with them for business a few years ago. and. You know, we didn't necessarily hit it off as great friends, but, you know, we became Facebook friends and, um, you know, would post happy birthday and other things on, you know, walls when it was relevant. And she came to me about a month ago and she said, Angie, I just see how hard you fight for your clients, how passionate you are in real estate and you want to make a lateral move and I'd like to hire you as my agent. So I thought that was really a compliment because, you know, there's, I'm sure I'm not the only real estate that she knows, but by some of the things that I say and by some of the uh, stories that I tell, which is another thing that I love to do, is just let people in on the story of what's going on, uh, then people will relate to that story, and sometimes they'll want to be a part of it, or sometimes they'll want to do something similar, so it's a good way to generate new leads off of a similar past experience. So one of the things I like about your posts is the one, you take a lot of pictures and post them, and then you tell a story about the picture. It's just not just a picture, it's here's who I'm with, what I'm doing. What made you start that? Well, I I just, I like people to kind of know what's going on, and a lot of it too is my family back in the Midwest, like not knowing what Angie's doing, you know, and wanting to, you know, kind of just be a part of my life, and they would always, you know, make fun of me, why I go live out in California and you pay a quarter of a million dollars for a little 1,100 square foot house, blah, blah, blah. You know how they are. So it's just like, you know, kind of proving to them, like, it's cool out here, I swear. <laughs> but, you know, wiping your cheeks. Like, I don't know you <laughs> also do is you talk about your clients, what they're going through in buying and selling, and you seem to get conversations with other ones of your clients, your past clients, and they all talk about the experience, and they have these conversations. How did that get started? Well, sometimes it's scary, uh, but a lot of it actually got started under damage control, because I work with first-time buyers, you guys, you have no idea sometimes the hiccups that we go through in a transaction, you know. We think it's going to close and then somebody, you know, slams the door in our face. So at first I liked to use Facebook so that I could kind of release my pressure of, you know, what's going on for me so that I could turn around and actually deal with it with a smile. So it's kind of like a, you know, just stress relief venting a little bit. But then I realized, oh yeah, you have clients and they're also under pressure and they might also be doing the same thing. So, Maybe you should make sure that you're friends with them so that you have damage control. Uh, so one of the things that we, you know, will do, and my assistant helps me greatly with this, is you know, when we have a buyer in escrow and there's challenges going on, we make sure that we're friends with them, and we make sure that when they say something um, to relieve pressure on their page, that we're there to be their cheerleader and you know, give it a positive spin and. I had a really stressful one last month. The, the appraisal came in $30,000 less than, um, just $30,000 under. It was a $300,000, you know, came in at three hundred. dollars We were in escrow at three thirty, dollars and this girl loved the property, you guys, to the point where her banner photo is the view mm -hmm. off 
off of this condo that she about to lose. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I've got to fix this. I've got to make sure that this comes through okay. And we just, you know, it was a miracle deal. We, I got the price reduced twice. And she's in her condo and I'm going to the housewarming party this weekend. But, you know, that type of a thing, when they post, you have to be there to encourage them because they get discouraged and then they have a sphere that can also be discouraging like not everybody always thinks on a, a, on a positive note so you have to be there to kind of help them out with that and it's amazing the friends of theirs that you meet uh, through those conversations it's like the, the ones that are posting and interacting with your existing clients when they're talking about their real estate and their transaction and where they're at with their loan those are usually the ones that have those types of things on their radar. So those are the people that you want to turn around and friend. It's kind of a way of like having the needle float to the top of the haystack. So uh, it's a great way to get and generate referrals. Well, I, I, and I can see that. At, to me, it's like you've developed this sort of ongoing, self-perpetuating flow of leads because you're talking about how you're helping people. And it's not about the real estate. It's about the involvement is about the connection that you make. And I think that people just seem to gravitate to your personality and style and you're attracting the people that like how you're handling and dealing with their friends. 